Leroy's Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver Walkthrough, Part 74. What's going on, guys? We're back here in Saffron City, ready to take on the gym leader Sabrina. But before we do that, let's give out the shout out for today, which is going to go to Chili Dog Zero. And if you want to shout out in the next video, all you have to do is leave a comment below. It's that simple. And having Chili Dog in your name might help you out a little bit. Um, but before we go in the gym here, uh, just really quickly, this right here is the Fighting Dojo next to it. Um, this is where you used to get Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee, but now it's just used for um, rematches with gym trainers. So if you want to rematch all the old gym leaders, that's where you go to fight them. Um, anyways, this is Sabrina's gym. Sabrina is a psychic type user. She's pretty hard. I could have fought Sabrina a long time ago, but I thought she was too much of a match for me, so I saved her till the end. So we'll see how things go now. Um, but yeah, this is one of those annoying gym puzzles with the teleporting things, the teleporting magical green squares, I mean, I don't really know how they work, but yeah, these gym puzzles are always really annoying, but I'll show you guys an easy way to get through it, then we won't have any problems. Um, yeah, you might be wondering why I'm using a golem in a psychic type gym. Well, this Bronzor actually is weak to ground. Um, Bronzor is either weak to ground or fire, depending on its ability. This one happens to have the heat proof ability instead of levitate, so feel free to use your ground type moves. I mean, I'm usually too afraid to use a ground type move on Bronzor because it usually has the levitate ability, but for whatever reason, I just remember that this one doesn't. And I'll stick around for this Hypno. Um, might be a horrible decision, but I'll see how it goes. We'll go with a Stone Edge. Oh, there we go! I somehow outsped this Hypno. I mean, I know Hypno's not that fast, but Rocky is literally just a giant ball of weight. Like, how do you get outsped by just a giant rock that weighs like a thousand pounds? I have no idea, but I guess I have a fast Golem. Alright, so there we go, and as far as getting through this puzzle very quickly, um, your next step should be going to the top left corner. And this path will just bring you trainer to trainer and eventually to Sabrina, so pretty handy. But I'm actually going to get rid of Golem from the front, I do not want him fighting anymore, he will get destroyed by any other Psychic type. So let's go with Crobat, and kind of ironic because Crobat's also weak to Psychic, but Crobat can handle them pretty well. Um... Yeah, Crobat can outspeed pretty much everything that it fights, and plus Fly does a lot of damage. Most Psychic-type Pokemon are pretty weak defensively anyways. Um, I do have Bite, which is super effective, but Fly does a little bit more, so let's go ahead and do that right now and take down this Mr. Mime. Because Mr. Mime has horrible defenses. Unless he uses Reflect, which, I don't know, doubles its defenses, but... Normally Mr. Mime's pretty easy to knock out, but Mr. Mime loves to use Reflect and Light Screen all day long. Which just really makes it... See, there it goes! Light screen! Like, seriously, it puts both of them up. It's the most annoying thing in the world. Uh, but we'll still finish him off with a bite here. Might be a little bit annoying for the rest of the battle. And did I really get a critical hit, like, the second turn? Like, seriously, just enough with these worthless critical hits. Just give me useful critical hits for once. Um, anyways, next up is Execute. And Execute really does not stand a chance against Crobat, because all of my attacking moves are super effective. Fly, Bite, Sludge Bomb, all super effective. Of course, Confuse Ray wouldn't really be super effective, but whatever. I don't know why I'd use Confuse Ray against this thing anyways. One fly should simply do the trick, even with the Reflect Up. Or maybe you'll live with a sliver of health and use Psychic on me, I don't know. I mean, just the fact that eggs are using Psychic just kind of baffles me in the first place. Um, but yeah, the Reflect wore off, so here we go. Bite this thing to death. And we defeated the eggs, there we go. The Psychic eggs with magical powers. And the light screen wore off, so now we're completely set. Not that I'm using special attacks anyways, but whatever. Um, just out of curiosity, I want to see how much a bite does. I wonder if bite can knock this thing out in one hit. Because that would be pretty pathetic, but... Bite also flinches a lot, so that's pretty nice. And there it goes, it flinches. Yeah, bite has a 3% chance of flinching, and I might use that to my... Um, or I might use that as part of my strategy when fighting the gym leader. Because the combination of Confuse Ray and a... Um, a move with a high critic or a high, a high flinching ratio is a pretty deadly combination. Pretty annoying combination, if you ask me. Um, anyways, I'm gonna heal up that little bit of damage I took from the Psychic, which was complete bogus because he seriously lived with one little bit of health. And yeah, it's all because of that stupid reflect. All Mr. Mime's fault, but anyways, um, yeah, you want to go to the bottom right corner here. Brings you to another trainer, another identical trainer. Literally looks the exact same. Um, but yeah. And I have no idea what this guy has on his team. So we will find out. Uh, oh, he's got a Kadabra. Alright, at least it's not an Alakazam. That would be trouble. But yeah, Kadabra is a very strong Pokemon. Like, 
I don't know, Cadaver doesn't seem too powerful, too deadly, but seriously, that Psychic that it just used, and thankfully I'm using Fly so it doesn't hit me, but that Psychic is deadly. That can, like, actually do a lot of damage to most of your Pokemon. Yeah, Cadab Abracadabra Alakazam, that's like just one of the most solid, the strongest Psychic evolution lines in the entire game. Uh, anyways, next up is Girafferig, which is spelled the same backwards and forward. Um, anyways, let's just go with a bite here. I don't think Fly will quite knock it out anyway, so I might as well see if I can flinch it. And it's not quite a okay, skill swap. Seriously, why does everyone in this gym likes to use the move skill swap, which is just it's so worthless and just like a waste of a turn, but Sabrina gives out the TM for skill swap, so all of her Pokemon have it, and it's just it's the most worthless move ever. I don't understand the point of it. Um you just swap abilities with the other Pokemon. Alright, so there we go, we defeated another trainer. And um, from here, you want to go to the bottom left. And I think this brings you to an open area, and then you just have to go up. And this is the final trainer. There's only four trainers in here before um, Sabrina, so... Let's actually switch out, though. I think this person has um, a Slowpoke and Slowbro, so I'm going to go over to Lantern. Just to make things a little bit easier for me. Slowbro is normally pretty hard to knock out without some super effective attacks. Or at least some powerful same type attack bonus super effects, I should say. Because Bite wouldn't really do the trick against Slowbro. Um, but yeah, I guess I was right, she does have a Slowpoke. So, Aqua Volt should easily take care of these with just a couple of discharges. I still have that Choice Specs on Lantern, which is just the greatest item ever. I'm so glad I have the Choice Specs just to switch off between Lantern and Meganium. It's literally just, it, it feels so cheap, but my Pokemon are just so powerful, it's awesome. Um, and next up is Slowbro, and even a Pokemon with as good of defenses as Slowbro at level 46 still can't take a discharge when I'm buffed up on these Choice Specs. Like seriously, Choice Specs are just like legal steroids in the game. You can just use them whenever and just boost up your attacks like crazy. So there we go, without any problems Slowbro goes down. Alright, not bad Aqua Volt. So I don't think I'm going to have to go back and heal at the Pokemon Center or anything, which is nice because I didn't want to have to go through this whole puzzle again. So yeah, once you're up here, just go to the bottom left panel, and you are teleported right in front of the gym leader, and off to the right a little bit. Um, but yeah, let's get prepared here. I want to have Crobat up front, and actually right now I have the Sharp Beak on Crobat. I kind of want to put um, the Black Glasses on Crobat. That'll boost up Bite's power, which is super effective. And um, Fly would still do more damage than Bite, but just the fact that Bite can also get that critical, or sorry, can also get that 30% flinch, um, that will be useful, so that's going to be my strategy, using Bite with Confuse Ray, so might as well get the Bite powered up a little bit. Alright, and Sabrina claims that she knew I was coming, like she had this vision years ago that I would come to challenge her. <laughs> so yeah, I guess Sabrina claims to be like a legitimate psychic, which kind of freaks me out, like, I wonder if Sabrina can like use Psybeam on somebody, <laughs> or like just, I don't know, use psychic attacks. She could pretty much just fight a Pokemon with her own psychic powers. But she starts off with Espeon at level 53. Um, all of Sabrina's Pokemon are weak to Ghost, Dark, and Bug. Espeon knows the moves Calm Mind, Shadow Ball, Psychic, and Skill Swap. It has crazy high special attack, really good speed, and pretty good special defense, so your best option would be hitting, hitting it with physical attacks. Um, I'm going to try confusing it though, because I know one Psychic will take me out, and I can only really get one free attack on it, so I might as well confuse it and hope it hits itself in confusion so I can last a bit longer. Definitely not a bad strategy. Um, not a bad idea to like just send something in and paralyze it or put it to sleep, just because when Espeon is just hitting you with Psychics, like, oh, it can just get nasty really quickly. Um, oh, you're still confused, nice. I'm getting pretty lucky here. Yes! <laughs> Get yourself a confusion again. Alright, you're probably gonna heal, so let's just keep attacking with Bite. I mean, she can waste all of her four restores, that's fine with me. As long as I'm not getting knocked out with Psychic, I'm perfectly happy. And perfectly content. Alright, so, actually one more of those might just put it in its place, so... Yeah, that might be the end of Espeon, which is actually surprising. I thought this thing was going to give me loads of trouble. Um, but we're still not done, though. We've got her Mr. Mime coming up next, and then the very powerful Alakazam to top things off, so... we still got a long ways to go, and I'm learning Air Slash. I forgot that's level 51. Um, I'll pass. Air Slash is a special attacking flying type move, which is pretty uncommon, but... Um, really no point in putting that in Crobat right now. Um, so for Mr. Mime, I kind of have a little strategy here. I could stay in with Crobat, it would look fine, but I'm going to go over to Heracross. I think Heracross can take care of this thing. 
Heracross does have Shadow Claw, which is super effective. I also have an item on him, which boosts up Ghost-type moves anyways, so... Um, one or two Shadow Claws might be enough to knock this thing out. Um, actually, I'm just really eager. I want to see how much this does. And you're going to put up a Light Screen, which I don't have any problems with, because I'm using physical attacks. But yeah, Mr. Mime knows Light Screen, along with Mimic, Psychic, and Skill Swap, so... Really can't do too much other than use Psychic, um, but definitely use your physical attackers. Mr. Mime, just like most Psychic types, has really horrible physical defense, but pretty high special defense, so... Physical attacks are the way to go, and she's probably going to heal here, I would assume, so... I'm going to um, just go ahead and Shadow Claw while she heals. Put that damage right back on it, hope I get a critical hit or something, knock this thing out. Um, but yeah, I think Heracross has good enough special defense to maybe take a Psychic, I'm not sure, but we'll just see. Oh, and you're not even going to use Psychic, you're going to use Mimic, so, alright, there you go, you learned Shadow Claw, now you're dead. Great call, Sabrina, I don't know why you did that. You had, like, a legitimate chance to knock me out, but, no, you just wanted to use Mimic so you could learn Shadow Claw. Alright, so last up is Alakazam, um, probably your most powerful Pokemon, at least her highest, highest level, so I will switch out and go over to Herbie and Meganium. I think Meganium matches up pretty well. Um, but Alakazam knows Psychic, Energy Ball, Skill Swap, and Reflect. Now, Alakazam, just like the other two, has horrible physical defense, but pretty good special defense, so Reflect can be kind of annoying. Um, I think what I'm going to do is just go with a uh, Frenzy Plant. That's like my most powerful move, all-out power, um, so we'll see how that does. And Alakazam, I don't really know, it's, it's really fast, it's going to outspeed most of your Pokemon, and there it goes with the Reflect, by the way. Um, yeah, it allows to be most of your Pokemon. It has crazy high special attacks, so definitely a deadly Pokemon. Its Psychic can pretty much sweep through your team. And also watch out for its Energy Ball, because it does have a Grass-type move. And you know what? Oh, crap! I forgot that the Light Screen is still up! That's why Frenzy Plant did so little. I was like, holy crap, Alakazam took that like a champ. Um, but yeah, there we go. It wore off, so one more Frenzy Plant actually might put it down into the red zone. And I should be able to live this Psychic, because Herbie is a boss and has amazing defenses. Oh, 10 hit points, there we go. Alright, Frenzy Plant, there's no more light screen up. Do your job, knock this thing out. Get a critical hit, do whatever it takes. I don't want Alakazam to sweep through my team. Oh my god, there we go, I knocked it out. I actually was kind of expecting him to live with a little bit. I mean, that's just been the, the trend of like this entire game, just Pokemon living with little bits of health. Um, but yeah, there we go, we defeated Sabrina. And I mean, if you really are psychic, shouldn't you be able to predict every single move I'm going to make? Shouldn't you just be able to destroy me in battle? I mean, you basically have the cheat code to life, psychic powers, and you still can't even beat me in a Pokemon battle. What does that say about you, Sabrina? But yeah, anyways, I'm going to get my uh, badge here, and the TM, TM48 skill swap, worthless, I don't want it. Will never come of use to me. But whatever, I wish you would give me like the TM for psychic or something cool like that. But no, we get stuck with skill swap instead, how unfortunate. But yeah, take the red panel to get out, or you can be an idiot and go the other way and get lost, but either way, we are certified trainers, so there we go. First people on the list. Um, I guess no one else knew how to get through the maze, but anyways, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching, everybody, and before I go, I will show you that I have 7 of the 8 gym badges. Actually, I should say 15 of the 16 gym badges, so our only challenge now is to take on Blue and get our last gym badge. So that's coming up in the next few episodes. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you guys all next time.